This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Paul Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare unto you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is. How that Jesus Christ died by our sins, according to the scripture. He was buried, he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. Thank God, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. She anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the broken heart, preach deliverance to the captives, coming a sight to the blind, set at liberty them that are bruised. I'll have a link on my web page to the anointing that took place at the gar- tomb of the garden June 16, 1974. And back, thank God, thank God, and back, and back, Thank God. Amen. The word is nothing. Even in your heart, in your mouth, there's a word of faith. Can I preach? You can best with your mouth. The Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Thank God, with the mouth and the heart, man believeth and the righteousness, or with the heart, man believeth and the righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. Glory, but that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. There's a power of God, salvation. Everyone want to believe it. Jay Burks, also to the Greek. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. As it is written, thank God I'm struggling big time. Amen. Have you, uh, can you turn to Romans 1, 16? Sure will. Amen. You'll find out why I'm struggling. Romans 1, 16. Right. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. I could not bring that up in the Spirit. Gotcha. Amen. Thank God. I want to welcome everyone that's receiving this broadcast on live stream. Thank you. Broken. Amen. Thank God. Apple TV. YouTube. And other devices. Did I get it all right? You got it right. Thank you. Kathy Day, Kathy Davidson, co-host, to my left. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning. And back. Kathy came to Water of Blood in 1984. God had told her, I believe it was in Pennsylvania, he was going to send her to a place where she could learn 
Come up with God. Is that close? That is very close, yes. Amen. Well, it's Pennsylvania. Right. Amen. And she showed up here in what, May? May of 1984. 84. Amen. I got these numbers in my heart, in my head, but sometimes Satan messes with me. Anyway, she been here ever since. Went through Order Blind Christian Training School, uh, both first and second year. Amen. And in 2008, I was standing by the pulpit on June 29th, a Sunday. I just finished doing two hours of television. And I said, and I didn't know what I said to be true, that my ancestors were sent to America that I could preach the gospel. I didn't know that. Kathy Small that night came up beside me in a few minutes and started talking about she had believed she had ancestors uh, on the Mayflower. Is that right? That's right. Amen. Well, by January oh nine. God had brought Kathy D and I in to some conversation that was certainly not, it was foreign to us. Neither one of us knew what God was saying. But when you've obeyed God since 1970, and you can read my history and see what I've done, maybe it would give you some encouragement to believe what I say. Amen. I laid my life down to the Lord. Holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y. You can read about that. So, in January, I believe God wanted Kathy Lee to come live with me. Was that January? That was January. 2009. You did. We had our difficult times. The devil hated us. Of course, he hated both of us all of our lives. And so, we started working out the purposes of God in our lives. And it was not always easy. It wasn't always Friendly. Would that be true? That would be the nice side of it, yes. <laughs> Amen. I'm not going to say any more. I obey God. Can you say the same? Amen. So, in 
his heart. One day, it seemed right. Although not right, what a struggle. My heart and mind was double binded. But I thought it was right that we get a marriage license. And I believe 17 people were present when I said, this marriage license is not worth a nickel or a penny or something before God. That stunned me. What have we done it for? But I thought, I think it's right. We go on. One day, God blamed me, told me, Bile, with the guards, they call it a divorce. I loved what God said. It was a reversal. I thought, well, uh, interesting, real interesting. God calls it a reversal. I know the courts ignore what God says. Amen. Amen. Oh, listen. I had a judge once say, we don't allow any born testimony in this courtroom. Well, it wasn't born testimony. It was coming from heaven. Maybe he had it right. Anyway, uh, Kathy D and I neither do what was going to come for. I never let it bother me. When you walk with God all these years, when you walked away from the professional and business that I was involved in, and obey God. You have a tendency to shrug your shoulders at what man says. And that's what I do. None of your business. You know, it's amazing. I will interject something here that people think that piece of paper makes it godly. Yeah. There's a lot of people that have a piece of paper and nothing else. Living in adultery. Yeah, I know. But I will say here on my side of that situation, yeah. um, when when we were talking about it, when you were talking about the reversal, at one point I didn't, you know, I, I felt like I didn't know what was going on. But I was in my office on the west side. I had just gotten that office, and I was sitting there reading the Word of God and the Spirit of God came in the room and God asked me, he said, do you want a marriage license or do you want a ministry and Amen. walk with me? And I realized at that moment what it was all for. You know, God gave you what you wanted. He gave you a beautiful veterinary practice, a beautiful state-of-the-art hospital. He gave you the horses you wanted. He gave you lands. He gave you houses. And then what did he say? in 1970, but give it all back. And God was in my room doing the same thing He's, because my life, I, want, I wanted to be the, the world's best teacher and I wanted the world's best family. And I wanted a, 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 frankly, I wanted a man to walk with God with. That's what my desires were. And in that room, God said, I want it all back. 
And you know what? It really wasn't that hard to give it all back, knowing God. See, by that time, you knew God. By that time, I knew him enough. Yes. A lot better. Oh, you didn't. Yeah, you, you were just meeting him. But I'd already been through all those years in Frisco and all that. So it wasn't, it, it, it hurt. Oh, there was pain involved, lots of pain. But I knew it was God. Amen. Well, I suppose we should go back to late 80s. I think that's when it was. God gave me a vision of a child in the womb. I said, who's that? That's your son. What? Oh, I'll tell you what. God rebuked me one day. Don't reject my promises. And it was about a son out of my loins. You know, he said almost the same thing to Abraham. When Abraham said, let Ishmael live before you. And God, and God said, wait a minute. Good Lord, Kathy. You know, I never even thought of that. That was Ishmael. Right. God said, no. I said, I'll, I'll bless Ishmael, but he is not what I said. Well, I struggled. 19th of August, 04. Read about it. The doves appeared on my patio in Blaine, Chase Oaks apartment. July 20, 08. Right. Read about it. Sunday morning, right in front of everybody. Donna Gothard was fasting for me. Donnie left the ministry. And Jack said, He still was a witness to this, and he was fasting for me. And that, he cannot leave. He cannot walk away from it. Donnie, you're a witness to all of this, and God will hold you to it. While the rest of them you are. And Donnie was fasting. No. Well, you can read about it on my webpage. That dove was amazing. It's actually a white wing, baby dove. That blue is set under my right front tire. Oh, my Cadillac. God. Donnie Gothard got the picture of him with his, his telephone. Right? Right. And the baby flew away across the street. Well, you better know I've struggled. I do not do anything unless it's God. And if I do, I get corrected before we move forward. So, uh, last evening, I don't After six, seven, you were sitting, were you at the table? I believe so. 
I was sitting at my table, and I think you sent me, or you are reading to me, an email about a short wave oh, yes. station okay. in Los Angeles right. that George Otis built. Right. Right? Right. And telling me that there's antennas that they would like me to consider going on. I'm not going, by the way. Not God. Amen. So, I was, you read that thing to me? And I was thinking about it, and I thought, my God, my God. Kathy, the a descendant of the Mayflower, Doyle, descendant, Rhode Island Mountains, eight great grandfather. You're 10 or so. 11 or 12. 11 or 12. Right. Well, by the way, you're related to Sarah Baylor, right? Pretty, yeah, we're pretty close. Cause, well, yes, we have five Mayflower descendants and the governor of uh, the Plymouth in both of us in our trees. We're about... 20 years, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah, it goes for several ge generations. Well, yeah, that's why we look like each other. Well, that's going to be coming out <laughs> the next few days. Not be today. Anyway, I thought, good Lord, you don't have to pray any longer, Doyle. Kathy is John's mother. That one. Now, when God gave me John's name, I wanted to call him John Davidson. No. I didn't have a name, just John. I thought, they won't let that go on. These legal beavers? Well, guess what? When the Lord reversed our marriage certificate, Kathy Davidson, which that was her name then, she kept it. After a lot of prayer and fasting. But. I didn't know what God wanted. Neither, well, neither one and, of us and, did. And, and I talked to you, and you said, keep it. You need to keep it up until the day that, that we did it. Well, I told you. I didn't care what you did with it. Right. But you were welcome to keep it as Davidson. And I told God, I didn't care what, you know, I had so many names. I kind of laughed. I told God, I don't know what my name is, except that God always called me Kathy. Yeah. And, and he never called me, you know, Kathy, my full name. And it, when, when, whenever God talked to me directly, it was always Kathy. Okay. I think I'm lit people's candle and certainly. Their email will be going. So let's read out of Isaiah chapter 8. And I want to show you something. The son that was born was born of a prophet. And a prophet. She's a prophetess. I'm a prophet. Not husband and wife. Not anything else. Just a prophetess and a prophet. 
and the boy's name is John. And it won't be long. He will conceive. Gaily, you got to read it? All right. Moreover, the Lord said unto me, Take a great roll and write in it with a man's pen concerning my hair shall I has best. And I took unto me faithful witnesses to record, Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Jeroboachiah. And I went unto the prophetess, and she conceived and bare a son. Then said the Lord to me, Call his name Maher Shalah Hazbez. Thank God it's just John. For before the child shall have knowledge to cry, My father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria, shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. All right. John will have a mother that's a providence and a father that's a prophet and an apostle. Is there any more? May I say something here? Sure. What else would you want? <laughs> Good question. I mean, if, you, if you're serving God, what else would you want? The will of God's what I want. That's, that's it right there. I'm sure that I've got sisters that when this boy is born, will either be relieved or blank. Oh, my God. Well, like you said, God's ways are above our ways, and he's not the least bit impressed with, with legalities. Isaiah 55. My ways are above your ways. Right. I can't remember that, but as the rain comes down from heaven, waters the earth, Notice, and returneth not then. So, my word that I send out will prosper and not return back to me. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. There it is. Have you had enough? <laughs> I can't think of any more unless you want to go to James. Oh, let's go to James 1, 22, and 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Thank you. God gave me these verses of Scripture in September 1970 in Sir Missouri. Read them. All right, verse 22. But be you doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a doer of the word, a, a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Amen. I've learned, I was taught that September 1970. That's the way I walked. Simple. It's in the Bible. Walk in it. Don't walk in your own lust. Amen. Which I tried some of that. <laughs> you know, you, you um, it comes up when people say about walking what God tells you to do. You, the, one of the first messages I heard when I came to Water of Life was, you can hear God. Amen. You can hear God. And what I didn't know until I walked a little further was I was hearing God even before I came to Water of Life. I just didn't know it was Him. Right. I mean, there'd be a, a voice in my heart that would say, don't do that. Just don't do that. And I would stop. You have a terrific example of when you were trying to build your hospital on 380. And, yeah. and you pulled into the land. You were considering building oh. your 
Yeah, your hospital on 380. And what happened to you? Well, I didn't want to build on three acres at all because I thought I might have a different direction for that facility. So I had a good friend on, uh, did you say 380? 380, yeah. Yeah, sure. I didn't want to build on 121. I got my mind on so many things. But, yeah, and I had a friend that owned two acres on 380, and I thought, maybe I need to build there. I went and talked to him, and I said, would you consider selling me that? He said, no, look, I don't want to sell it, but if you need it, I'll sell it to you. Oh, I went out and looked at it. I parked in front of it, and the spirit of God went, mm, I mean, just stirred everything inside of me. It scared the daylights, daylights out of me. I started that car. I went to 121. <laughs> I pulled up. I opened the door. I got out. Now, I'm not being dramatic. I'm not a dramatic person, but I'm shut out of pool. And I walked easy, crossed the right of way, got up on that three acres, right where I thought we should build. And I stood there, and nothing happened. I thought, you mean it's going to be okay to build here? And this was before 1970. This is 1967. Right. Oh, my goodness sakes. People don't have a clue that I was a prophet. Anointed before I came from my mother's womb. And they don't believe it. And they got about as much respect for prophets as they did in the days of Jesus. I, mean, I had that, that same voice when, before I came to Water of Life, uh, we moved to Fort Worth, and I thought that I needed, well, I needed to get a job, and I thought I'd go back to waitressing, and I was already a waitress at a restaurant here in Dallas, Richardson, so when we moved to Fort Worth, I thought I'll just transfer. I walked in that restaurant and looked around a little bit, and the same thing happened to me in my stomach was... I mean, it was just, I had to get out of there. I couldn't get out of there fast enough. I couldn't get away from the people fast enough. And, and, and I went home and I was in tears That's because that thing in me was saying, you're not going to work there. And I'm in tears going, I can't work there. I can't work there. And you know what God wanted? He wanted me to teach in a private Christian school. And that's where I saw the satellite. And the satellite, I started watching the satellite. And when we, and God moved us, that's when, that minister in Pennsylvania spoke to me and said, I'm going to send you to a place where you're going to learn how to follow me. That was during that time, and God sent me here because I was looking for the satellite. And that's how I got here. Amen. Well, I've heard all kinds of silly external feelings that people just knew it were God. Well, I'll tell you what, God talks right here. Right. In the spirit. Spirit to spirit. Now, what do we do? You now? wanted uh, 1 Corinthians. Oh, 10. 1 Corinthians. 13. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It Amen. says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as, in common, such as is common to man, that God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. I found that to be true. Every temptation, believe me, I've had a lot of them. A lot of them. I'm going to have to say it. It was a great temptation about John, who, his mother would be. I did not know. 
I had offers. No thanks. Amen. I have great respect for a woman. I won't use her name. But I have great respect for her. She said, I'd like to talk to you. I said, fine. May we talk at your office? Sure. We walked in the office. She said, you've always been honest. Now be honest. Am I your wife and the mother of John? And I said, no. Thank you. Wasn't that neat? That was neat. Hallelujah. Now what do I do? What time is it? It's 11.36. Y'all talk? I believe so, yes. Speak. I think I think it's right to speak. Okay. We have been talking about Amer uh, America and God's dealing with America and God's beginning, that God was in the beginning of America, that he sent the pilgrims over. He sent the Rhode Island. And, and your ancestors, we've talked about, you know, the eight. What's important about that is they were the ones that began the sixth principal church. Amen. It had been over a thousand years before the six principles had been taught. They were hidden. They were put away. And, and they were just coming out. And those men in Rhode Island brought out the six principles that God speaks of in Hebrews 6, chapter, uh, verse 1 and 2. Right. And they did an extraordinary, brave thing against all what the churches were doing at that time. They baptized. They, well, they, just a minute. Yeah. I know you're aware of this, but in 1973, God was talking to me about the foundation. Right. I've shared this, and a person I knew named Mike Reed came by, and I could read 1 Corinthians 3, foundation, and Paul said, no other foundation. And I said to Mike, where's the rest of this? No, you don't know? Well, no, I don't know. I wouldn't be asking. <laughs> that would be you. Yeah. <laughs> That's the bluntness of a Davidson. Do you right. know that? <laughs> it is. And he said, well, turn to Hebrews 6. God, I'd read that. Satan wanted Mark, Mike to it, show me. And, and God. I was going to say, it came to you by revelation. Huh? It came to you by revelation. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't know if you understand this. If, if, if you've been a Christian or if you have the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost is teaching you, you could read this Bible a hundred times. But it doesn't come except by revelation. And it's got to be ministered to your heart by revelation. You can have the scriptures in your head, but it won't work. It, you cannot use it until it's in your heart by revelation. And it came to you, the uh, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, by revelation. Immediately. Right. You know what? I started studying. Right. I believe that was June 73. And that is the same thing that happened to your ancestors. When they got the word of God... God gave them Hebrews 1, 6, 1 and 2 by revelation. They saw it. They read it. They studied it out. And they, uh, Roger Williams being the leader. And Roger Williams said, we can't do what we're doing. We've been baptizing infants. And that is not what the word of God says. And they said, we've got to baptize when you are old enough to make a proclamation, a confession to God to receive Jesus and then be baptized. Let me, let's make it, I want to make it straight. I'm not a descendant of Roger Williams. No, you're not, but, but uh, everybody with him. Everybody with him. All right. right, a group with him. Roger Williams was the one that taught this. The rest of them taught it. Samuel Gordon taught it. But they saw this in the scriptures, and they, they said, we've got to be baptized. We got to be baptized according to, to the scriptures and according to Romans 6. And they were baptized. They went against the church in America. They went against the church in England. They went against the church in Europe. But they baptized. Got them in a heap of trouble too. Amen. 
And, and that was the revelation that God gave those men. So it's important that people realize that the six principal church was a huge change in the spirit by God. Now, the, the, the things that I have to share are about the, their descendants and about people that were in Boston. The first one I want to share with you, there's two events that I want to bring to your knowledge. Your knowledge of America that probably wasn't taught in, your, in school when you were in high school and junior high. But in six to, uh, 1746, 30 years, 30 years before the Declaration of Independence, the colonies were, were going strong. They were British. We had 13 of them. And Boston was one of the biggest colonies. It had a perfect harbor. So Boston had a lot of commerce going in and out. Well, we ended up in the, um, in the French and Indian War. In fact, this is where George Washington first became a British soldier. It was in the French and, in, uh, French and English War. English-French War. French and in Indian is what we refer to it as. Right. Anyway, the, um, the French decided that they were going to come and they were going to start in Nova Scotia. They were going to send an army over here through boats. Obviously, it's the only way they could get over here. But they were going to take a bunch of boats, go into uh, Nova Scotia, and they were going to start from Nova Scotia, and their orders were to go clear down the East Coast and destroy everything in their path. They had 70 ships. They had 8,000 men. They got, put them on boats, and they came. Now, it just so happened that somebody saw the orders. The admiral's name was Admiral Denville. Somebody saw his orders, and they, they sent out word to England. They said, they're, go they're going to the colonies, and they're going to destroy them. England tried to send a group of their own, an army of themselves, to help defend their colonies because they were all British. And they couldn't even leave England. They left and they ran into strong winds and they had to go back into the harbor. They couldn't come and help. So now you got the colonies over here. They hear the French are coming. And the French and Boston was one of the first places they were going to hit. And they were, gonna, they were told to destroy everything to put it all to flames, to destroy, and destroy the people there. So the people in Boston got together, and they, the governor of Massachusetts at the time, his name was Shirley, and he called everybody together. He said, you have got, we are going to take this day, I think it was August 24, 1746. He said, we are going to take the day, and we are going to fast. Everybody in this city is going to fast and pray because we have no help. None. They had a little bit. They tried to what they could to defend the city, but they knew they were totally outnumbered. So he told everybody, we're going to have a day of fasting and prayers. And uh, hundreds met in the Old South Meeting Hall in Boston to pray. Well, they had a, a Reverend Prince was his name. And I'm going to read you what Reverend Prince prayed. Because a remarkable thing happened. Were the, was God with the colonies or was he with the French? And Prince got up to pray and he prays this prayer. I want to use the words he used. He said, deliver us from our enemy. He said, send thy tempest, O Lord, upon the waters to the eastward. Raise thy right hand. Scatter the ships of our tormentors and drive them hence. Sink their proud frigates beneath the power of thy winds. He's praying this. It was a beautiful sunny day. When he finishes his prayer, the sun disappears. And the church goes into shadow. And he said, all of a sudden, there was a wind whipping around the building. They said they could hear it screech. People were freaking out. It was written. They were freaking out. The bell in the tower rings twice. Twice. Nobody's in the bell tower. And he goes on, and, he's, and, the, and Prince stops praying because this is happening. And he said, we hear thy voice, O Lord. He said, we hear it. Thy breath is upon the waters to the eastward, even under the deep. Thy bell tolls for the death of our enemies. And he bowed his head. And he bowed his head for a little bit. And then he lifted up his head and he said, Father, he said, to thy be the glory, Lord. To thy be the glory. Now, what happened to that French, that French fleet? Right at that time, the French fleet, 70 ships, 8,000 soldiers, ran into a series of storms. The first thing that happened was two of the biggest frigates sank. 
A bunch of the others were, were um, what are they? Well, they were hurt. They were damaged. A fever hit the soldiers. And in a little time, 2,000 soldiers are dead. 4,000 are sick. They find Duke uh, Denville dead. They think of apparent suicide. His vice admiral kills himself with his sword. They've got damaged ships. They've got only 2,000 soldiers able to, to run the ships. They turn around. They went back to France. They never made it to the, to the colonies. They never made it to America. Do you think maybe God's hand was with America at that time? You know, at that time, we were right in the middle of a revival. We were right in the middle of a revival. It was the Spirit of God in the land. And you know the prayers of his people were heard. And the French army never made it to Nova Scotia. And they never made it to Boston. Now, let's skip forward a couple hundred years. Let's skip forward a hundred years. Amen. Let's see. It is 1146. We had um, America. We had the Declaration of Independence. We had the Revolutionary War. We had the Constitution. Now we're a fledgling country. What was going on in Europe at the time was French, the French also tried to have a revolution. They, they wanted a republic too. You know what the French ended up with? Their, their revolution started in 1789, I believe. They didn't end up with a republic. They ended up with an emperor. His name was Napoleon. And Napoleon went at war with all of Europe. And in England was involved. Well, Napoleon finally advocated in 1814. Now the British aren't fighting France anymore. They decided, you know what? Let's go back and get America. Let's go back. The country's too young. Let's go back and get her. In fact, what they wanted to do was destroy the, the, the colonies. So we had the War of 1812. We had the war, you know, the Revolutionary War is 1876. That went on there by 1883, I think. Now we've got the War of eight, uh, 17. Now we've got the War of 1812. They're coming over to take care of America. They want it back. Well, they ended up in, in 1814. They ended up in Chesapeake Bay. They ended up in Washington, D.C. They're coming to destroy Washington, D.C. They have 4,000 soldiers. They've got an admiral. I uh, think his name is Cornwall. Cornwall brings his 4,000 soldiers with the direction of he's going to destroy Washington, D.C. Now, Washington, D.C. wasn't a major port. They were also going to go to Boston. They were going to go to uh, Baltimore. They were going to go down the sea coast. But what they wanted to do was get at our mor morale, and so they were going to destroy Washington, D.C. They come in. We don't have the soldiers to, to protect Washington, D.C. In fact, some of our orders were all messed up. We didn't even realize what was going on until it was too late. The White House is getting ready to have dinner. The, um, the, the James Madison was the fourth president at the time. He's with the troops down by the water. He realizes they're coming and we can't stop them. He sends word to the White House. He said, get out. His wife's at the White House. Dolly Madison, great cupcakes. They were named after her. Dolly Madison realizes she's got to take, she's got to get out of the White House. You know, it was her that directed to take some of the important stuff of the White House with them. She was the one that cut the portrait of, of George Washington. She didn't want it destroyed. She cut it out of its frame. She put it on her carriage, and they got out just as the admiral was coming into town. They came to the White House. Dinner was set. They had dinner in the kitchen already cooked. So they came and they sat. The British sat down. They thought, this is great. We're going to have dinner in the White House. So they have dinner. The soldiers are having dinner in the White House. When they're finished, they set the White House on fire. They go down to the Capitol. They go into the Senate building. They, did, they pretend to be senators for a little bit, mocking America, and then they set the Capitol on fire. Now, they're, getting, they're trying to destroy the whole city, and an amazing thing happens. An amazing thing happens. Washington at this time is burning. They come out, they're taking the city, and what they believe may have been a hurricane hit. Hit Washington, D.C., torrential rains. In the middle of this, in the middle of the British trying to do all this harm, now we got a hurricane on the city. 
a hurricane in the harbor. And not only that, the hurricane brings a tornado. The tornado goes right up Constitution Avenue. Right up Constitution Avenue. They had two cannons there. The, her, the tornado picked them up and threw them yards away. Ever tried to pick up a cannon? The rains coming down in the next couple of hours put out all the fires. They put out all the fires. At one point, they said that, the, that it's written that the admiral was talking to a woman that lived in the city, and he said, what is it, lady? He said, is this the kind of weather you people have over here? And she said, no, this is what happens when you try to mess with our God. He said, it, it's God after our enemies. Do you know more British soldiers died by that tornado and the hurricane than it did by, because they had no army here that was trying to protect the city. They left the city. Whether they were supposed to stay or not, they left the city. They tried to get back to the harbor, and they found out that the roads were covered with trees. Once they did get to their ships, a bunch of their ships were either sunk on shore or they were damaged. They got out of the town. They got out of the city. Do you know, people, consider this. America is over 240 years old. In fact, it's 240 years old this year. 240 years old old is America. And do you know that it has only been occupied on its shores that one day, that one day, August 1814, and it was only occupied for 26 hours. That is the only time that your country has ever been occupied by another war, by another, another country. Have you ever considered why? Have you ever considered why we were never occupied? You might want to consider why America has never been occupied by a foreign power. And you might want to consider it pretty soon. I'm finished. Amen. Well done. We have, it's 11.52. Some words just came to me. God will manifest himself. In the election, coming up, Biden coming up. Hear me? I hear you. God will manifest himself. Watch it. Watch what happens. You cannot do one thing in this country unless God allows it. Amen. Not one thing. Not one thing can you do unless God allows it. Hallelujah. I am. Amen. I want to speak to America. The six principal doctrine was established by Rhode Island founders. Absolutely. How about Mayflower. They didn't get it until later. That's what I thought. Right. But my ancestors, David Gasbright's ancestors, established the sixth principal church. He moves six, one of the Amen. That word, the word of God was established by Samuel Gordon, Stokely Westcott, John Warner, Zeke Holloman, Chad Brown, Larry Hagin. 
thank God. God great. Uh, Cogashel, did you say that one? Yeah, it's Cogashel. Yeah. Oh, Obadiah. Obadiah. Oh, Obadiah. 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 Ob and they laid that word in uh, on the east coast. That word was called foundation. Right? Right. Yeah. Thank God. Let me tell you, folks, that faith the land. And faith the fight for it. Amen. They suffered greatly. But they laid that foundation in America. And states and government, even that foundation affected. Certainly, Rhode Island. Amen. Right? Right. Did it not affect the Constitution? Absolutely. Amen. Well, the, the, like I said, Rhode Island had in their own charter about being able to, to have the, the freedom to, to follow those words, to follow what they saw fit. And that, that charter lasted until 1843, but it was, a, it was another stepping stone into the Constitution and Declaration of Independence. In fact, it was Rhode Island that said, we're not going to ratify the Constitution until you put in the Bill of Rights. Amen. And what was the first one? The first Bill of Rights was uh, that the government cannot mess with your religion. Amen. Now, God's Word as authority it was brought here with the kingdom of God prophesied by Jesus. And it came. And there were people in that faith. They believed it. Oh, my friends, without faith, it's impossible to please God. They that come to God must believe that he is God and a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. My ancestors, Kathy, these ancestors, and faith, they believe God. That's why America has been successful. Amen. God saw to it. His word was laid in the hearts of some of his people. And there are two of us, the descendants of that group, and our ancestors preached the word. Both of us were baptized in the Holy Ghost. Both of us speak in tongues. Both of us have a revelation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Both of us do. Not just us, many. Many. And that revelation in the land. Oh, friends, don't kid yourself. God didn't turn this country over to the devil. No. Are you done? I'm done. No other name. Under it. Whereby one must be saved. Just one. Jesus 
of this. Jesus Christ of this. Just one another thing whereby one must be saved. Though under name, under heaven, a man confess the name Jesus. You've got the faith. You've got the grace in your heart. God put it there and confess it after me and be saved, be born again, be one with the Lord. Jesus, 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 we invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas, 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.